Hi everyone, I am Dr. Kamsha and welcome to my channel. Well, we all have heard the statement that fat burns in the wick of carbohydrates. But have we ever wondered why the wick is needed to burn the fat or oil? Today we are going to see the mechanism lying behind this statement. So here is the image of oil lamp which contains a wick. If we try to light the oil directly, we won't be able to. But when we put the wick in the dia or oil lamp, we are able to light it, right? This statement is true for our body also. That means this mechanism works in our body too. Oxidation of fat needs the help of carbohydrate. If we compare these two sentences, oil in the lamp is similar to the fat in the body and wick is similar to the carbohydrate. Wicks are made up of cotton and cottons are made up of cellulose. And we all know that cellulose are polymer of glucose. Therefore, ultimate thing which is burning the fat is carbohydrate. So before going to the mechanism, we should know what are fats. So fat is a general term we often use for lipids, but true fats are one of many types of lipids. If we talk of true fat, they are classified under simple lipids. Simple lipids are ester of fatty acids with various alcohols. In case of true fat, they are ester of fatty acids with glycerol. Similarly, candles are made up of wax and they are ester of fatty acids with monohydrate alcohols. If we are discussing the definition of fat, we must know what are fatty acids. They are aliphatic carboxylic acid. What are aliphatic? Aliphatic simply means organic compound in open chain form as we can see here. And carboxylic acids are organic acids containing carbonyl group. So that was about the structural definition of fat and fatty acids. So what is burning of fat? It is nothing but beta oxidation of fatty acids. Fats are broken into fatty acids in presence of various enzymes and then fatty acids undergo a four step reaction to produce one acetyl coenzyme A and acyl coenzyme A with two less carbon atoms. And the cycle is repeated again and again until fatty acids are completely broken into acetyl coenzyme A. Now what happens to this acetyl coenzyme A? Let's see. Acetyl coenzyme A goes into the Krebs cycle to get oxidized. Although here we are discussing the acetyl coenzyme A coming from degradation of fatty acids. There are other sources of acetyl coenzyme A as well such as metabolism of glucose and amino acids. Remember that acetyl coenzyme A is a 2 carbon molecule. Now this acetyl coenzyme A condenses with oxaloacetate to form citrate which undergoes further reaction to produce two molecules of carbon dioxide as we can see in the third and the fourth step. That means complete oxidation of two carbon compound acetyl coenzyme A and regeneration of oxaloacetate thereby making this oxaloacetate as catalyst. Now what is the source of this oxaloacetate? It's nothing but pyruvate which in presence of pyruvate carboxylase is converted to oxaloacetate. And we all know that pyruvate comes from glucose. So here the oxaloacetate is working like a wick or flame which is just being used to burn or oxidize the acetyl coenzyme coming from the fatty acids. In, in absence of oxaloacetate, and this acetyl coenzyme A gets converted to ketone bodies. So if we see the whole reaction in this picture, in the presence of oxaloacetate, acetyl coenzyme A, which is a 2 carbon molecule, is completely oxidized to 2 carbon dioxide molecule, regenerating the oxaloacetate. So to summarize, we have seen fats getting digested into fatty acids, which then undergo beta oxidation to produce acetyl coenzyme A and in presence of oxaloacetate this acetyl coenzyme A is completely oxidized to two molecules of carbon dioxide therefore we say that fat burns or gets oxidized in the flame of carbohydrate and here that carbohydrate is oxaloacetate so this was all about this video see you in next video thank you